Hello everybody. Time to get working on those events. So how do you create events in C-sharp and exactly what do they do? Well, they have their foundation in delegates. What are delegates? Well, if you've gone to a computer science school, you probably already know the answer, but I think most of you are probably haven't. So let's go ahead and go over them. You can think of a delegate, you know those those toddler's toys that have the holes and you got the bricks that you're supposed to stick in the correct shape hole and you got the triangular hole for the triangular brick and the square hole for the square brick. A delegate is a hole. So what we've just done is we have declared that there is now a hole, the shape of a function and a delegate allows us to stick a function into that hole and obviously only the functions that are shaped the same as the hole can get through so if the rest of your code is like um, a mountainous terrain you know it's like something solid a concrete uh, walkway then a delegate is a hole that you've carved into your walkway that you can just stick whatever object you'd like as long as it's got the right shape thing at the bottom to actually fit. And that's a very powerful tool because it lets you uh, create a lot of hard-coded stuff and then just stick random functions in as you need to do. There are a lot of pieces of syntactic sugar that let you do this a lot faster, but I think that they obscure how things work a little bit and I don't want anyone to get confused. I'd much rather that you have to write more code and know what's going on rather than leaning on syntactic sugar. So you can do these exact same things using actions or event handlers, but I think it's a little too early for that. So we're going to stick to the fundamental ideas. And the fundamental idea is a delegate. The action and event handler stuff is actually just, just resolves to delegates. So this is how it all works. We've created a delegate that's this size. It, has, it returns a void and it has no arguments. That is the shape of the hole we've carved into our concrete. We actually do want to pass an argument though. One of the most common arguments to pass with an event is of course the item itself. You wouldn't call it this, yeah, something like this. Uh, and that would be something very straightforward, right? You'd pass it itself, but we actually don't care about this thing. This is just a display object. We just don't care about it. Uh, we actually only care about the actual data that it's trying to send us. So we don't care about the display object. We only care about the inventory object that we are trying to send across. There we go. So now we have a hole that is shaped with a void return and one argument that's an inventory item. Any function can fit into this hole as long as it takes an inventory item as an argument and returns a void. But this isn't an event, it's a delegate. An event is a framework built on top of a delegate. So if a delegate is a hole that you carve into the concrete and you can stick functions into, an event is a hole that you carve into the concrete that's got a large bag underneath. And you can stick any event in the large bag, I'm sorry, any function in the large bag as long as it's the right shape. And you can also pull any function out of that bag that you've put in. And when you try and call that hole, you're going to end up hitting all of the things that are in the bag. So you can think of an event as a bag tied to the bottom of a hole that just holds however many functions that you can put in. Because of that, you can't really do an event without a delegate. So you do need to define a delegate. And there are some syntactic sugar shortcuts that do it automatically on the back end, but I think that that kind of hides it. So let's go ahead and have that done manually and then do this manually as well. Event, that's the keyword you need. There we are. So we have a hole that we've car carved into our concrete and the hole is the shape of an inventory item that gets passed into a function. We, we Any function that can take an inventory item as its sole argument we can fit into this hole we've carved. And below that hole we have a sack, and we can stuff as many functions into that sack as we need to, and we can pull them back out when we're done. I hope that was clear. Let me know if you don't get it. But we still need to actually call this function, so what we're going to we're going to create a function that just calls that. So public void click. 
Now to actually call a function, sorry, to actually call an event, all you need to do is say on click dot invoke. Oh, you need to pass it an item, of course. And that will go ahead and run every function that's in that sack that we've put underneath the concrete. Unfortunately, if there's nothing in the bag, this will throw an error. Uh, and this is one of the problems I have with events, and this is why some people like to use a syntactic sugar, because then you don't have to worry about it too much. But in this case, we have to say if on click does not equal null. Uh, yeah, I think maybe that's... Yeah, I think it's just on... Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm 90% sure that's right. Uh, then we can just invoke it. But the problem is that this event doesn't actually exist until someone registers for it. It's just an idiosyncrasy of how C-sharp events work. So if we hit play, that's going to work. But we need to wire it up. So how do we wire it up? Well, obviously, we want to go into the inventory items and start to do something a little bit more interesting. Let's go ahead and drag that inventory back into our game world and then drag some items into it. Bonk, there we are. So we have this item and it needs to do a little bit more than it's been doing, so let's go ahead and make it into a button. Now that it's a button, it can be clicked and we want to add in something that happens when it gets clicked. And what are we going to do? We're going to tell it to click. Um, there you are. There you are. If you watched the last episode, you should be super clear that this is exactly what we plan to do. There shouldn't be any surprises in this. This is nothing but showing you line by line, click by click, exactly how we set up the thing we designed in the last episode. The Unity event triggers the C Sharp event, and it has to do that because the Unity event isn't flexible enough to do all this stuff on its own. Let's go ahead and add in some monitoring. Give it some good debug so we'll know exactly what's going on all the time, shall we? Alright, so we do have to make sure that this item gets saved again. So we're going to hit apply. And then we are going to want it gone. And let's just make double sure that that doesn't save into part of the inventory here. Yeah, good. Sometimes Unity malfunctions with nesting objects. It depends on the version. So now we've got all of these buttons, and you can see that they are buttons. Let's go over here and click on one. See? That was pretty easy, don't you think? We are now rigged up. Our event is ready. Our Unity event is ready. It gets called at the right time. All we have to do now is subscribe to that event and make sure that we're ready to catch it when it happens. It's already been eight minutes, so I think we should stop here, uh, because actually wiring it up requires me to create a new class, so this is a good break point. Just to make absolutely sure that you know what we did, the full extent of the code we created, these two lines, and this line, these two lines. So we only created four lines of code in this episode, but they are four lines of code that you absolutely have to understand. You've got the delegate, which is the hole in the shape of a function. You've got the event, which is the bag to catch things that are attached that's attached to that hole. And then you have to actually invoke it. That's all we've done. But those are critical critical things to understand.